Hello to everyone. Welcome to Nevada Women's Film Festival's program number five, uh, our live Q&A. My name is Samantha Rodriguez, and I'm running the behind the scenes with my partner, Jemson Boyozos. We are both co-founders of Eccentric Artists, who are serving as the executive committee for this year's festival. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Michelle Patrick, who is our moderator for today. And just a short bio about her. Over the past decade, Michelle Patrick has worked at the intersections of theater, dance, film, arts programming, and public speaking. Her work currently focuses on nonprofit arts, organizations, cultural institutions, and individual artists. Originally from Queens, New York, she is also a facilitator voiceover artist and has varied background as an arts administrator that includes the Nevada Arts Council, City of Las Vegas, Denver Cent Center for the Performing Arts, and the Sundance Film Festival. So Michelle, thank you so much for being here and take it away. Thank you so much, Samantha, for that really lovely introduction. And welcome everyone. What a privilege and an honor it is to um, have everyone with us. And I just wanted to thank all of the filmmakers for joining us today. Thank you so much for making the time. Um, mm -hmm. Joining us uh, is, um, well, we have several different filmmakers that uh, won't be in attendance, um, but the ones that are here from Indebted to Women, Maria Lobo and Roy Gitian. Thank you for joining us. Um, also from a part of me, Marina Waltz, and hoping to join us from Unhide is Ramya Nambizan. Um, and again, apologies if I did not say that pronunciation right, but um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Catherine Harold and Satil Halabar have sent a message. Hi. My name is Catherine Harold, and thank you so much for having invited uh, me and Sel Teal to do a Q&A with you today. We were inc we are um, incredibly honored um, by this invitation and would have loved to do the Q&A, but Sel Teal's car broke down um, just a couple minutes ago. So we will be unable to join you uh, for the noon um, time slot. Um, all I can say is Christine is a film that um, that is incredibly dear to my heart. Um, I we uh, we filmed it while I was still at university, um, but finished it later after university. And um, I have a heart uh, due to a personal situation um, I was connected to. Um, I had a heart to really speak um, to women who are going through um, or have been through domestic violence. Um, Christine is not my story. Um, the situation I was connected to was uh, mostly um, emotional and psychological uh, mistreatment, but um, but I know but Christine is still um, a story of mistreatment and abuse. And um, I just want women to know um, who are going through uh, Christine's situation that there is hope and um, and they can leave a situation that is detrimental to their person and they have incredible value. So thank you very, very much. Um, and I am looking forward to seeing the short films and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for this invitation. Thank you. We look forward to seeing another submission from you, Catherine. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to start this conversation off with just doing a quick check-in with everyone. Um, to see just where you are post pandemic, um, how you're feeling about coming back into the field, um, things that you're noticing, how are, you, how are you feeling? How's everybody doing? I, mean, I, I think we're in a kind of a strange situation, but somehow we didn't, we didn't stop. I mean, we had to just to move our work into the online, uh, life and also our our life <laughs> this online environment so i mean we are lucky that uh, where we live we, we have a um, health system that is providing us the support we need and 
we feel somehow with they are have some privilege in this in this sense. But we are okay. <laughs> right now we are okay. Awesome. Uh, well, for me, if, if I may, yeah. Uh, so for me, I was, of course, it's kind of a lot of um, probably stress and um, uncertainty, but I try to use this time and um, kind of productive in terms of the doing research, reading uh, a writer and a producer. I was on the line with them and we had a, like a, a book club every week we were reading different stories and thinking together what in the future we would like to do adaptation or create a new story together so i felt like um the process of creating process was quite intense and productive uh and unless i was less distracted by kind of like uh, no traveling no going out and so i was more uh, like sitting at home uh in my cave <laughs> uh feel kind of safe <laughs> and at the same time i think um for that sometimes you go to somewhere different country to re for retreat and i found this retreat in at home and just and uh, i was online with yeah people uh, which I uh, knew, or I met some new people online as well this time. And like with new DOP, I'm planning to to do next uh, next film with her. Uh, we yeah we met recently, just last week personally, and immediately we just realized that yeah online we we felt that chemistry is right and we can work and, uh, and we, we try to make a new story next year so uh, and also I try first time to do animation and a direct animation at the moment and hopefully I will finish by the end of the summer but this was also a new process I discovered that the way to to do something yeah well I would say it's just was yeah negative and positive it's quite a lot of out of that negativity I managed to take it and and yeah, and feel quite yeah satisfied with the process I, uh, for the last year. Of course, the in terms of like, health and um, the future is kind of a bit yeah worrying <laughs> about how we're we going to kind of if this vaccine doesn't work, what would it, what would we do? <laughs> and plus, my family, I'm from Russia. I, I live I, I live in London. Uh, uh, my, I kind of separated from from my family. I mean, from my mom, my sister, and um, for this year, and it's quite hard. Yeah, but yeah. no, thank thank you for sharing that. It's it's been really interesting to just see how people are working and still being creative. And I I actually do have a follow up question to that a little bit later, but I do want to dive in um, to to really. Um, to these films because they were all really brilliant. Um, I actually would like to start with Maria and Roy. Um, wow, first of all, wow, wow, wow. Um, this was such such an important documentary and what, what staggering statistics from El Salvador um, regarding teen pregnancy and, and incest. Um, I, I was I was really unaware of that and it was just really overwhelming to hear, to hear those numbers. Um, Again, there's 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 a lot of focus on um, oppression and systemic practices of patriarchy. But um, can you can you just explain a little bit or uh, talk a little bit about um, women who mirror that behavior and then extract it on other women? Because um, I just I found this really really fascinating. If you also wanted to talk a little bit about those numbers um, and, and things that are going on in relation to the movie, please do. But um, I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. <laughs> Heavy question, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's such a question. Uh, it's, it's difficult because I, I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't talk about women. I would say that this kind of structure, a structure because really patriarchy is something structural. It's in all society. From the very first moment when you are born, you are being educated with a lot of values and ideas and philosophy of life. And uh, it's very difficult to get out of there. And for, for children, for uh, young women, from, for also for men, for all society, um, it's, it's kind of a spirit. But uh, for girls, I would say also it's uh, fear. 
I mean, you cannot say no. You cannot. Uh, you cannot say that you got pregnant because uh, maybe your neighbor uh, did it. I don't know. You cannot say it because you will be punished for sure. You are always guilty, and it's not something that is only only happening in El Salvador. I think that always patriarchy is a fight taking place in the body of women. Our mm. body is always there. It's a battlefield. So mm, really, it's something structural for me. It's, uh, it's uh, very difficult to change. But on the other hand, also the fight is from there. It's local. The great fight, the great changes are from El Salvador. Recently, it was uh, last week or mm. 10 days ago, Sara, one of our girls talking in the in jail was released and uh, that's thanks yes <laughs> we are really really happy about it yes. because uh, she was uh, facing 26 years Those and uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> Those sentences I just could not believe it 30 mm. to 40 years I mean my goodness wow yeah yeah, and um, then when a woman is listening in court, you're going to spend 30 years in jail, and maybe you are 18. Wow, it's uh, such a life. I mean, uh, all this is, you just need to think the fear, how afraid you are all your life to say no, to say stop, to say this is not fair. But it is happening. We have worked with uh, La Colectiva, La uh, Agrupación Ciudadana. They are also part of this uh, film. And uh, now, for example, Teodora is our narrator, is the very man. Teodora, she has, she's working with women when they come out from jail. She's helping them to, uh, you know, to be again in the society, but she's teaching them how to be activists. Mm. And that's a very important thing also, because now they are, you know, they are being aware of what is happening. We are being uh, violated. This is completely unfair. Now we are going ch to change it. And not, I don't know, the, uh, how do you say, the lawyer, uh, Abby, she's a woman. All, most of mm, people here, they are women, sometimes without the studies, without uh, no possibilities of uh, being rich or something like that. And they are fighting, but we have some women, more privileged women, let's say like uh, Berta de Leon, for example, or the doctor, that they are also working for that. There are a lot of doctors because for doctors it's very difficult. They cannot say, okay, this is not a woman for to be guilty, not to shame because it's a mixed carriage. I mean, it can happen. Doctors cannot say it because police will go for them and now, you have a group of doctors that they are facing the system. And in our film, we wanted to highlight the bad things, but it's very important to highlight, to support the fight because it's happening. Right. And I believe mean, he will be successful. Yes, I'm, one of the things that really struck me was just how composed the, the women who were in jail were, right? I mean, it was just almost like, okay, this is what's happening. This is part of our system and that's it. That, was, that, was, that really, really um, stuck with me. Um, but also what was inspiring was to see the two teenage girls towards the end, right? Just, just being that inspiration, right? Rapping and saying, no, no, we're gonna change the future. So that was, that was really, really awesome. Thank you. Um, Roy, was there anything that surprised you um, in this process in terms of filmmaking? Maybe the question is if there was something that didn't surprise me when, <laughs> I mean, it was, um, yeah, I mean, all, all the situation, we knew about that because we work in an NGO, so we work together with the organizations, with the local organizations in El Salvador, so we knew about the, the situation, and those organizations were the ones that, uh, told us that they, they needed some uh, audiovisual or some content to, to do some uh, communication and to try to, to move the, um, the issue. So when we went there, we already knew about that. But um, I mean, when, when you know this woman and you start talk, to talk with them, it's, I mean, you, you cannot 
it's, it's difficult to express that uh, you cannot understand anything. I mean, it's something so um, very unreal for for us when feel like that. And also when you when you listen to in jail or out of jail, the I mean, the attitude they have, the I wouldn't say that they are proud, but somehow they are not. They don't feel they don't feel they are victims. Obviously, mm-hmm. they are victims, but they don't feel that. And in our field, we didn't want to show this image. We want to to somehow push them up, um, to to show they are uh, the the they are protagonists, and that they need to be protagonists you know, of this change. So. For me, everything was very striking. The, the day we went to jail, it was everything was uh, messy, and when we managed to to get in, it was a lot of. Uh, they didn't allow the, even the lawyers to go to jail, so we managed to to go there to do the the filming. We have just a couple of hours inside jail, and it was very impressive. And also the conversations that are not in the film. When you finish filming and you get there, that's uh, having some eating something, talking. I mean, we've been in different places uh, filming, but this movie was very touching for for us. I think mm-hmm. so, so, so good. Thank you. I'm actually going to move this over um, to Marina. Um, part of me um, really registered because wow, it's it's just. It's really interesting how men and women process loss and grief. Um, and I just, I wanted you to talk a little bit about um, if, if that contributes to um, a detachment of how women process um, experiences of loss and control, right? Because um, I, I love the, the, the male character in this when he just, Ask that one quick question and then just was out the door. But then you just see the the main protagonist just again, it's always with her, right? Part of me. So can you just dive a little bit into that? Yeah, we have a co- uh, yeah, I have a couple uh the couple in in the film, and I thought, okay, what's the, it's a um they just um a young couple and uh um both of them, yeah, they they lost child and it's a stillbirth of uh the child and I, I thought, okay, in this kind of situation, uh, for her to be in touch with her emotions uh, directly is not scary for him. As actually, it's a big, uh, it's a big thing, and as he's he's just afraid of that. Plus, he thinks if he, uh, if they both just uh, stop kind of uh, going for work or going for for doing anything, that all their world going to collapse. He wants to preserve or, or hold this and just say, okay, what happened has happened. I know it's sad, but let, let's let, let it go. Let's let's just carry on. Let's continue our life. That's why for him, just to say something very unemotional thing, everything is going to be okay. For her, it's not enough. And this kind of emotional disconnection between dynamic between her and him uh, just um, create this distance and gap between that because he uh, emotionally, he just uh, can't feel pain and that's why he blocked himself and and maybe in the society mainly men um generally are not allowed to be uh sensitive or emotional yeah you have to be strong and plus i'm kind of from patriarchal society of russia whereas the kind of position men and women are quite strong yeah woman as a wife or woman as a kind of emotional and uh and man is also provider and uh kind of can't cry so and uh that's why i thought maybe it could be in my story it could be also can show these things uh and i also was inspired by a painting of uh frida Kahlo, uh, mm-hmm. uh my birth and it's quite um open painting she um uh, kind of put the open legs on the bed uh, and the the uh, that uh, uh, baby kind of between her legs and as uh, she painted this painting when she lost her baby in this mm-hmm. carriage and uh, so I was the kind of when I saw that painting I thought oh this is quite um, not only interesting it's kind of it's very deep emotional and scary <laughs> and and I thought imagine if it 
happened with you or with me, then how would I process this kind of it's, 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 it's just, it's beyond of imagination. It's very hard. And so that's why, uh, that's why this film basically is was based on that uh, painting. And I try to recreate this emotional, my response on this. How would I kind of probably uh, uh, go through this kind of experience? And would I survive at the end? I don't know. Mm. That's why I have a corridor with water, like a waterfall. This is emotions like, uh, and she's in a, um, at the end, she's in a void uh, on her own, like, uh, yeah, mm. naked, uh, fragile. And, and there's also kind of like a little uh, baby just kind of almost ready to die mm. <laughs> and you can lose him. So this was, I tried to be on the emotional level to just express my kind of, um, I never experienced this such a, a dramatic um, kind of um, like lost a grief and but I try to recreate and imagine yeah. him. So yeah, that thank you that opening shot with the eyes of the fetus and then um, that was really beautiful and really striking and I just that that again that sat with me as well. Mm -hmm. um, just to bring it back to that detachment, do you think that that resonates in how how men storytell? Do you think that detachment? Well, it could be now these days is more stereotype how we kind of can think. And I think, uh, for example, I used to live a man with kind of would be detached and want, wants to be emotional connection. And um, eventually I left him for this, re for this reason. And now I'm in a new relationship and I see this man I'm sharing now my life. He's very emotional. He's not scared of his emotions. And so we kind of, uh, I can be open and I can be myself with him. And just because I know he's not scared of my emotions and I'm scared, not scared. And he, he's not scared to show his emotions. And this brings actually us to get this openness. That's awesome. And I think what contributes to that are these conversations that we're having um, and, and that we'll continue to have. And I wanna um, open this up to the group. Um, just why are we still having to educate the public about these things, right? About, um, women and oppression and all, all of these things. Why are we still, right? Because there, we keep making films. We keep um, having the, these dialogues and these conversations. Why do you think that, um, why do you think the lesson still has to be learned? And I'm just gonna open that up to everybody. Uh, well, I, I would say probably uh, if, uh, uh, you in New York or um, or some kind of uh, in a capital like I'm in London and I feel different because not all world now I would say uh, so open about this and uh, and still there's a lot of kind of oppression and uh, old traditions and position of uh, women in society is quite uh, yeah it's it's for example, time to time when I go to Russia and uh, talk with my old friends or new generation, even new generation in Russia, I'm, I'm talking about uh, young girls or, or uh, women, uh, they don't understand me. Why, what, what kind of, they, for example, they don't know anything about feminism and for them feminism is mainly, it's, it's ironically, they see as, as it just fe uh, feminism at the, when woman uh, doesn't uh, kind of uh, love men or she doesn't need man, a man in her life. It's just like, it's very um, aggressive response on, on this, as is, of course is a, um, and they don't understand that uh, why we, uh, I think it's a fear and, and not to feel kind of that you you can be, uh, and you can, you can have your voice, you can have your choice, and it's actually wonderful, beautiful, but any choice, if you have means you have a responsibility for this and for responsibility you need to do something and it's also kind of you have to say that yes i'm ready and i want and and if you surround by people who actually don't support you in this case and then it's very hard to step out and start to live differently um so i made my step uh, 10 years ago and i moved out of that uh circle uh and where I felt actually almost like a doll, <laughs> mainly, I mean, but uh, 
man or my even parents want me, me to be. Is it just good looking, uh, uh, good wife or good mom uh, and, and, and nothing else. Uh, so, and I felt unhappy, deeply unhappy that I wasn't, uh, I, I wasn't feeling that it's me. Uh, and some yeah, strength inside I probably built by myself, I don't know. So kind of, I stepped to um, some place I didn't know how it would work. It's maybe I thought maybe it's, I'm going to die or I'm going to completely lost. I, I didn't have any um, kind of clear plan. I just deeply felt connection that I don't want to stay. I don't want to uh, carry on this life. I don't. I disagree with many other things aspect. So I kind of probably was brave enough and believe. And maybe it's a bit words, but for that time I, I thought, okay, uh, now or never. <laughs> So awesome. Thank you. Maria, you want to jump in? Thank you for no, that. Ah, no, no, I was I was listening, but I have the table here, so <laughs> sometimes. No, I, I I agree with Marina. She said something that is is not the same in all places that I agree. And even here, if I if I think in my country in Spain, I can say that it's not the same. You can go to a city and situation is one and to the rural area and it's different. Or even in the city in the same city you can have you can find families in one place. So yes, it is necessary, it's education because we have been living like this for millions of years. So we have to face all the time the argument that but it has always worked like that. Why do you want to, why do you want to change it? So yes, it's necessary, but I'm quite happy because part of our work is uh, we work with teenagers in high schools and I'm very proud at least of uh, Spanish uh, youngsters we work with because I think that they are, I don't know how to say, like 10 yes. miles behind us. The, when you see their answers, uh, the tokens that, that you can have with them and the arguments, it's like, uh, I think we are moving forward. I mean, we're mm. very slowly, very, very slowly, yeah. for sure. And uh, it's very <laughs> unequal. I mean, in some countries, you you see the movement that is a step forward, 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 and in other countries, you don't see that movement, okay? But it was the same when we spoke. That we work a lot with teenagers in schools and with media and feminism, equality, a lot of topics. Uh, they are much more, uh, their, their minds. Much, <laughs> uh, I mean, I couldn't imagine that when I was standing. So for me, there's some hope, even though there's, an, obviously there's a need of, to, to work more about that. And um, moving to the to El Salvador, and when we met this hip hop, hip hop and femenino, this, this group of uh, teenagers, the rappers you talk about before. And they, they are the singers. <laughs> For us, it was like, wow, because the, you have you just have to cross not just the, I mean, not just gender, but also the the, the place they are living in with, okay? These, these girls are very poor, let's say. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities they have for education were very, very little. Um, with this situation, they are... Uh, changing their minds and working to change their minds. So for me, it's also very, very interesting, this, this profile. And um, also relating with <laughs> pandemic, we, we, we aim to, to bring them to Spain, to the high schools here, to talk with the girls and the boys here in the schools. But it was just in the pre-pandemic and the pandemic broke the, these plans. So we hope to to bring them I don't know <laughs> next <laughs> year or whenever but it was very very we're very excited to to have them here in the schools but it wasn't possible. Awesome. So just to my earlier question when 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 um, I had asked just about um, the pandemic, um, I was actually talking to um, some younger women who were interested in coming into this field but many of them had expressed some apprehension because of all of the things that they've heard about 
sexual harassment and sexual assault within the industry. What advice would you, um, would all of you give to uh, young women coming into um, this industry, right, regarding that subject? And do you see things really changing? Do you see practices changing? Um, what is this field going to look like in 10 to 15 years? <laughs> it's true that uh, to find women in the, I am speaking in the industry yes. as a whole, uh, we still are working in production and we are doing, you know, makeup and we are doing some tasks, most of us. And they are being doing photography, they are directing most of them. So it's true that, for example, for me, when I started uh, to work in television and TV, I was the only girl in the technical team, the only one. Wow. And I'm talking like 15 years ago, still, when we need uh, people, you know, to work with cameras or with micros or uh, technical tasks are always for them. And uh, the others, production, writing are for us. It's true that, for example, in documentary field, it's different. And I think that there are a lot of women here saying, hey, I want to try. And I think that the industry in general is more open. But as in the rest of the, li of the life, I would tell them that they will have to fight, for sure. They will have a lot of stereotypes or are you a woman? You are right then about emotions, or you only can write about. Uh, as Marina was saying, you you only please talk me about caring or about. But we are better than fifteen years ago. That's for sure. And uh, maybe they will be suffering, or they will be violent for some harassment. Not only in the industry, it's sadly. Sadly, it will happen to them in uh, other spaces. So uh, we have to keep fighting <laughs> with the tools we have. Yes, I'm just uh, hoping for a day when we don't have, to, we, we no longer have to fight, right? Um, Marina, any thoughts on that as well? Uh, well, I uh, probably this would be um, because I never, never, I, I'm an independent filmmaker and I started to make films only 10 years ago. I made my first uh, short, it was eight, eight years ago. And um, I'm independent and I work with people I like. So I kind of, um, I have a, a team and um, I would say, and I'm happy, very happy. I feel like we, we're a creative team and together we trust each other. and. Uh, as, and I built this team. I mean, just it was my choice, and I, I, I guess it's a kind of privileged kind of position I have at the moment. Uh, but um, um, before uh, my experience was, uh, I used to work in the galleries, and I had a gallery in Moscow, and uh, just remember being a curator and um, uh, and experience that sometimes, yeah, it's just my position was. Uh, a lot of time they look at me and said, oh, yeah, she's a woman. <laughs> oh, kind of, it, I wasn't taken seriously in a uh, gallery world, whereas Manly is a man. <laughs> I mean, uh, you can have a female, uh, but I noticed that uh, man mainly is a kind of control of that contemporary world. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the world of contemporary art. Mm -hmm. uh, well, um, I have a daughter, she's 17, and I'll tell her and teach her kind of or try to kind of um, share with her my experience that uh, you have to um, feel uh, not feel confident to say no and and just feel like that you have your own rights and it's it's a deep inside your own rights and uh, nobody actually allowed to scream at you or just be a kind of fear. Yeah harassing or other, uh, yeah, this is just uh, as absolutely, it's, um, yeah, it, 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 you can't, it's unacceptable. So, and you have to kind of, you just, you don't, you, you just need to say no and, and put person, try to put person, or, uh, or walk away. And it's a kind of, I just remember that my, uh, my, no problem, but I had a lot of fears and, and I kind of, I thought, oh, if I say something, I would be punished or some uh, kind of, I didn't feel like I have rights. 
So that's why for my, yeah, to my daughter, I kind of try to say, no, you have, and you have your own voice and you have, and nothing can kind of, so you just, uh, you just, you are, and that's it. And the, the whole value of you, just have your value of yourself. This is very important. And I think, yeah. That is, thank you. Um, I, I just have one more question, it's closing. Um, and again, I just wanna thank you all so much for making the time um, because your work is, is so, so, so important. Um, and with that, with all of these obstacles and, and pockets of adversity, what drives you to stay in this work? What drives your storytelling? I wonder does <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, in my case, I love it. We have been mm. doing this, I think, for the last 20 years. And um, I like it. And it is true that once you start working in something you believe in, that this, you know, it's something of what you are, really. Yes. It's, it's your being. I mean, you cannot get detached. So for us, it's true that this, uh, when every time when we finish one story, we are thinking in the new one. We are also, as we said before, exploring how to use media with uh, different work to do participative uh, movements or stories. And I think it's something I love. So that's why I stay here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We, we well, need to say, so thank you, thank you. Uh, well, I uh, uh, kind of, I don't see myself anything uh, as kind of, I, I, I see myself as, as an artist and I see myself as a filmmaker because media is a film as the, close to me and I like stories and I like to research and, and create my own stories uh, based on some, yeah, be inspired by, and plus I'm, uh, I live with, um, uh, 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 partner and he's a composer and he works mainly in theater and we kind of uh, we found each other in terms of the like creative couple and that's why this is my life I can't see it, you know, anything else I could <laughs> I would like to do uh, and um, and more important that I actually realized that even if you're a woman you can be a filmmaker it can be amazing because we have so many male filmmakers and uh, we just now grow and grow and getting more and more uh, kind of I think we deserve it and it's, I mean just is uh, female filmmakers I think they're brilliant and more and more we have we hear uh, new names and it's it's great Absolutely. And just, I think, <laughs> <laughs> yes and I think I, I really think that you, we have a, a such a great responsibility because we know how to tell stories so we are artists communicators journalists we, we know how to do it. So we have a great responsibility. We can talk about forever, but we can use it for something we believe in. And I want to thank this festival because I think that all the people working to make this possible is very important. Creating these spaces where our films are watched and um, you know minds are moving. So you are part of this for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh and also that sometimes you, you see the change. I mean, for us, the, this new that uh, Sarah was released from prison last week, it was like, wow, and it was not, not the, the, the film itself, but all together, okay? So, for example, the interviews were used for the, for the, for, for the, jail, for the, for the, for, for the, the committee of for the, the all arbitrary detentions from the UN. UN. And then to the court, and then the, all the movement, all the girls. So, so you see that kind of a part, there are a little piece of this change. So, so this for us is a fuel to, to continue doing this kind of movies. So, for me, that's what impels me to, to, to continue working on that. Wow. Yeah, I also want to say that, uh, yeah, it's very unique uh, situation. I, actually, it's my first interview uh, I've never, never done before. I mean, in terms of the filmmaking <laughs> and talking about my work uh, and, yeah, and have a film festival, which is kind of have this unique opportunity, um, yeah, to answer questions and 
feel connected and actually see the real people uh, outside of the screen is great. Yeah, it's it's really really kind of emotionally kind of it's a, it, it, it me personally gives support and um, and actually also strength to carry on and. Uh, Thank yeah, you. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. We are so honored to be that, just that blanket of support, right? And we look forward to your submissions in the future. We look forward to more conversations. And thank you again so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Continue the work. It's so, so good. And we'll be sure to keep plugging and pushing uh, your work out. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Bye. 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 See Bye. you. Bye. Bye.